wee while ago on Al's Geek Lab, we made a video about the IBM PC XT slash 286 or Model 286, a real mouthful. And this machine was really, really full of a bit of an identity crisis because on the front, the case was that of a PC or a PC XT. You know, it was this old kind of rugged kind of retro -y look with the kind of bent covers that I really kind of liked. Cool look. That's what it looked like from the outside. It looked like a PC or the XT. And then when you got inside, it looked like the 80. So instead of an 8088, 4.77 megahertz PC, it had the beating hearts of an 80. It had the 80286 processor sitting in at six megahertz. You may remember from that last video, what we did is we decided to upgrade the CPU in there and a few other things to make it run faster. And we got it to go from six megahertz to eight megahertz and all of that seemed fairly good we also tried for a little bit more we tried for i don't know 10 megahertz and maybe even faster because the 286 itself can run up to 20 megahertz well at least that's the cpu that we put in there but that really didn't work a few things were problematic for us and uh, we looked at the run speeds of the various chips that were in there the the memory controller and the bus controller and we had a look at these chips, I've got them right here. Not that there's very much to see, they're tiny little chips. But on the motherboard, there was one called the D82288-8 and the D82284-6. That dash bit at the end represents the speed of the clock that will run at. So six megahertz in the last case and in the former case, eight megahertz. So really trying to drive a PC that was built for six megahertz CPUs, trying to make them run any faster than that really is gonna end in some form of tears. Well, we managed to finally replace those chips with eight megahertz counterparts, same chips, just a dash eight at the end. And then what we had to do is replace the crystal. That's this thing, by the way, this is a normal quartz oscillator crystal. Basically, we had to take out the old crystal and put in a new crystal so that it would work. And this video is the result of doing just that with that old machine. How fast did we make it go in the end? Well, for that, you'll just have to stay tuned here on Al's Geek Lab. So you can imagine my astonishment when Things had been soldered on the motherboard when the new timing chips were in place and when we had the oscillator that was pumping away at 24 megahertz or so divided by that clock chip down to 12 megahertz. This was a lot faster than what we'd expected to work and certainly did not work on those dash six chips before. So what we were seeing now is the system coming up and I thought for a moment, everything's going great. But then, of course, the system wouldn't boot. Now, on this particular system, I was using an IDE controller with a compact flash card. And yeah, I could see that it wasn't booting. The system was stable. It would accept keyboard input, but it just wasn't booting. So that probably meant that the bus itself wasn't running at 12 megahertz. It just wasn't capable of running at 12 megahertz. And that's because whilst there was no real ISA bus standard, it's probably only been tested at around 8 to 10 megahertz. It never really operated any faster than that. And in 286s later on, and some 386s as well, it got to the point where there was two separate timers. There was a bus timer and the CPU timer, and they were totally separate clocks. But this is um, the original sort of AT, where it was all kind of handled all in one. Trying again, this time with 16 megahertz megahertz crystal for an 8 megahertz operation. Let's see if this boots at least. It's noticeably slower doing the memory test there. Eh? Yeah it is. Yeah. But we've had it. Yeah. There we go. Alright okay so that that proves that then yeah. I guess doesn't it? Okay. It takes a heck of a lot of time to load. Yeah, it does. 
But there we go. Oh, that hurt. No secret. Oh, I'm being hurt. Oh! Where'd he come from? <laughs> Where did he come from? That's actually quite playable. Yeah. Right. You know, you're turning and you're moving and... Yeah, it's That's not bad. I am running, running down the hallway there. If this works, then I'll um, pare down these legs because the legs, when you buy these crystals, is pretty long. But I'm just going to put it in the uh, in the bodge that we had in the first place, which is the sort of sunroof on the side of it. Wow, it sort of worked. Um, you may be able to see there that it stopped at the memory count at 128 kilobytes. Let's, let's try it again. Now that just could be because the oscillator itself is very loose, so even the slightest bit of movement might not help at all. We switch it on again and I've moved it about here. Plug the keyboard in as well. Alright, well that looks like it's starting up now. So maybe it just needs to be secured better. And it's booting. Wow. This I did not expect. <laughs> I thought maybe it'll get to uh, the point of boot and then uh, like we did with the 24 megahertz so that would be the 12 megahertz CPU I thought it, you know because we got to that the 12 megahertz CPU it just didn't work it got to the boot screen and then stopped right there but this seems to be working at least so far that glorious monochrome monitor I love it what the CPU speed comes out at. So it reckons it's a 10 megahertz CPU. So the comparison to the saved one, which was a PCXT, I believe it just a normal 4.77 megahertz, is um, is doing pretty good. This is freaking working, as Adrian would say. Look at this, and look at how fast that is. I can't believe it. Now, it is obviously a bit faster because it's the CG version, but the, in terms of the speed, that's, uh, that's pretty unbelievable. And I bet mo most people didn't expect to see Wolfenstein 3D running on a monochrome monitor. It's, that's down to a hack made by J.H. Howard. I wish um, that hack would make it work on a EGA display. Alright, so this is um, on a VGA monitor. Sorry about the screen flicker. But this is full fat Wolfenstein on the same machine, obviously. Let's see how this goes. We'll just see if this runs at any speed at all. That seems faster, if anything, on the VGA version, which is very odd. I'm pretty sure it was slower than that on the CGA version. Right, okay, well, you know, this is VGA now. We're bitten about 256 colours. You can see it's a bit slower. But it's not unplayable. I mean, that's full screen, right? That's pretty good. 
Uh, let's uh, let's see about changing the screen size a little bit. Tone it down a few notches. Yeah, I mean, it's not hella bad, is it? That's incredible. Look at that. Wolfenstein 3D in full VGA playing on what once was or still is, I guess. It claims to be an XT. It's not bad. Wow. Pretty good. So what video wouldn't be um, right without some benchmarking? So first of all, let's have a look at Norton Sysinfo. Norton Sysinfo here says that we've got a 286 at 10 megahertz, which we knew already. Let's have a look at the CPU speed. So this is a system index, uh, but it's indexing it against uh, an Intel Pentium 66, a 486DX33, and a 386DX33. And we can see there that this scores a 7.5 against those two uh, architectures. Let's have a look at SysM46 as well and do the same comparison there because each one obviously benchmarks against a different era of computing. So this one should be, yeah, it's against um, XT's 80s and, 80s and a 386 which would have been the top of the line at that point. So it scores a 7.5 compared to a 34.7 for a compact but uh, 33 megahertz 386. But more interestingly, uh, when we compare it against the IBM 80, uh, with the second iteration of the 80, which was an 8 megahertz PC, you can see that that scores a 4.4. So, you know, it's getting close to double. It's not almost double, but it's getting close to double the performance of the IBM 80. That's probably um, due to a number of things. Obviously, the big one being the 10 megahertz clock is 2 megahertz faster than the 8 megahertz Intel. But obviously, this particular machine has a zero weight state RAM. So um, that's obviously helping with the performance as well. So really interesting to see how this computational index compares it to its contemporary. And it's, um, it's obviously kind of blowing it out of the water there. So let's have a look at some other comparisons here or some other benchmarking that we can run. Landmark, uh, good old Landmark. So there's um, the very old one, which is 2.0. Let's have a look at what that says. So it reckons that it's uh, running at, uh, well, it, the clock information it's giving it is 10.194 megahertz, but then it's also saying that it clocks it in around 12.83 megahertz, which is really interesting. Don't know quite how it gets that uh, number, but there you go. Um, the floating point unit, it's using an 80287XL, um, which is actually kind of the 386 or 387 guts. So it's quite interesting to see it so high up there, uh, which is cool. So yeah, um, that's. It says overall there in the, in the top right, it says this computer performs like a 13 megahertz 80 with a 15 megahertz 80287. So again, quite interesting there. These old um, speed tests were not particularly reliable. It just gave you some sort of benchmark against other machines. So this is a slightly newer version of the same product, speed test by Landmark. So slower on the slower on the FPU, but faster on the CPU. So it's really interesting there how it comes up with that sort of difference on the same software, just a newer version of the software. Well, that's it. This machine, IBM said, no, you're not going to upgrade this because we reckon you've got to buy the more expensive PC80 than buying this 5162, which was kind of in the middle between the XT and the AT. But we've shown that with a little bit of 
Hackery, you can make an upgrade by changing out the quartz crystal and a few support chips and lo and behold you can get up to probably 10 megahertz maybe even faster if you really tried but I think the bus probably holds it back so 10 megahertz is the sweet spot for this machine making it at least 2 megahertz faster than the AT. If you've enjoyed this video then please hit that subscribe button and give it a like. Drop a wee comment below, that would be lovely. But thanks again for watching Al's Geek Lab, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care and see you later.